So, Hale, you're here from Toronto. Your wife won an award, a humanitarian award for... Valor. Uh, for, for Valor in addressing issues of uh, what you think are uh, racism within Islam. And it was in front of... Uh, the award was bestowed by the Simon Wiesenthal Center. Jews are not familiar with what Muslim attitudes towards Jews are. Uh, most people are of the opinion that if uh, we just leave them alone, uh, they'll love us. What's the prevailing attitude in Muslim culture, uh, at least uh, to your experience? Well, as I mentioned before, there is a great deal of anti-Semitism in the Muslim world. A lot of that is uninformed. It should not exist. Uh, Jews, Muslim, Christians are are people of the book in the Quran. They are what we call Ahlul Kitab. But it's sad to say that the majority of the Muslims do not adhere to this injunction in the Quran. They adhere to killings and they uh, side with uh, other kinds of violence, but they don't adhere to what is mentioned in the Quran as people of the book. So, unfortunately, as I said before, a large segment, the majority of Muslims, have this anti-Semitism built into their DNA. And it's either taught at an early age by parents or teachers or the school curriculum in case of a lot of Arab countries, or it is uh, through the mosque culture that they learn about uh, anti-Semitism, that Jews cannot be trusted, etc., etc., and that is unfortunate. And the sooner they get rid of this unnecessary notion that they have, the better it is for them, especially those living in North America. I can't control what happens in Muslim countries, but I definitely can expose and educate people as to what is happening in North America and Europe. And this uh, inbuilt anti-Semitism has no place in a democratic society. It has no place in a society where we are trying to shed any kind of bigotry and hatred. So once we as Muslims uh, talk about and critique and uh, uh, expose uh, uh, situations like the KKK or establishments like the KKK, we must look within ourselves and see the racism that prevails within the Muslim society and we have to we have to come to terms with not hating Jews or Christians or any other society we must especially get rid of this notion about anti-semitism it is inbuilt it's talked on the dining tables it's taught to children at a young age and uh, it has to stop there is no other way that we can uh, expose this problem. Mm -hmm. Is this an attitude which exists um, purely on uh, an ideological level or does it manifest in bias and bigotry, discrimination in Muslims dealing with Jewish people? It definitely translates into bigotry and into hating uh, a community that has uh, done them no harm. And we, ca we have to stop looking at it from the angle of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. That's one small uh, iota of uh, an issue. There are 1.6 billion Muslims. Uh, the Arabs only count as 20% of the whole Muslim population. If you take the Palestinian, it's 0.1% of the Muslim population. Or my math may not be totally accurate, but some such figure. So that issue is a separate issue. It can be talked about, why not? It can be discussed, why not? But as a political issue, it does not have to bring the whole Muslim world into being anti-Semitic because of one issue. What about Pakistan's treatment of Bangladesh? There were about 3 million people massacred by the Pakistan army. Why don't we talk about that? Why don't we talk about issues that happened in Sudan? Why don't we talk about issues that are happening every day in Iran? Why aren't we talking about human rights against gays 
and the LGBT community in Iran, where they're supposed to be thrown from the highest monument or building. What ridiculous kind of ruling is that? So why don't we, when we want to discuss, yes, discuss the Palestinian issue, but discuss the problems within the Muslim countries also, and do not get sucked in into this anti-Semitism that your parents or your cleric in the mosque may have taught you, or your uh, ultra-left organizations which are peddling BDS movement, Al-Quds Day, or Israel Apartheid Week, uh, the back of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars just to create this uh, rift between two communities. Don't fall for that. Is this a bigotry that could manifest itself in uh, any Jew uh, dealing with uh, a Muslim in a position of authority or power? For instance, in a, a government role, a, in a, a, a bureaucrat, uh, might, or even uh, in uh, the medical or dental fields, the healthcare fields, uh, insurances, things where uh, where uh, uh, Jewish people encounter uh, Muslim Canadians and uh, and Muslim Americans, uh, could it manifest in uh, a form of prejudice and discrimination? I hope not. Uh, it can, yes. Why not? It can. It can uh, morph into any kind of uh, hatred, uh, and it should not. It should not because we are neighbors. We are co-workers. We are. Uh, uh, play on the same fields. Our children go to the same schools. We uh, have a lot of close ties uh, culturally and religiously. So it should not. And uh, it does. It does on at times, but it should not. Do you see it as a tribal rivalry? Definitely. Uh, Muslims still behave in a tribal uh, manner. Uh, and again, I come back to the Quran. It teaches you to think independently for yourself. And, as so, and, and the Prophet came into the Arabian Peninsula to teach the Arabs not to deal with each other with the tribal mentality, but think and act individually. So definitely it is a tribal uh, manifest, uh, hatred due to tribal manifestation of this idea of anti-Semitism. Is this an alert you would like to convey to your Jewish friends to be aware that this exists? Well, I would like to uh, alert my Jewish friends that don't be naive about political situations and religiosities. Uh, the Muslims themselves are going through a process. Hopefully it will it'll lead to reformation of their faith but we are in a transition and in that transition don't get taken in by what you see and what you hear uh, go back to uh, the root of the problem uh, and make sure and i'll give you a uh, few pointers uh, when you want to befriend muslims here's my litmus test is what do they think of armed jihad what do they think of uh, gender equality and should Israel exist as a nation state. These answers will give you a clear indication of where the person is coming from. There is no way that you can convince me that a country uh, like Israel, who's developed so much, has no right to exist. What kind of madness is that? So you have to, have to uh, challenge that notion. Uh, 57 Muslim countries exist that were created during and uh, around the same circumstances. Nobody questions them. But uh, the state of Israel is always, if this is not anti-Semitism, then I don't see any other way you can explain that. Uh -huh. But is Muslim anti-Semitism rooted in the Arab-Israeli conflict or does it predate that? It, it is uh, uh, rooted in the Arab-Israeli conflict since the creation of Israel. It has escalated. It may have been there before, but not as a systemic uh, hatred of people, not as a system, systemic uh, uh, option. Uh, and it's only because of the creation of Israel that uh, this is being taught as one of the uh, pillars of Islam that you have to pray, you have to fast, and then you have to hate the Jews. It's not, uh, it's, it's no other reason 
but the creation of Israel that has caused that. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And if a Palestinian state were to be established, would this uh, uh, enmity towards Jewish people or towards Jews among Muslims, would it uh, disappear? No, I think in the current uh, political environment, the creation of a Palestinian state would only multiply the animosity towards Israel. It will be used as a launching pad uh, against Israel. So it has to be done under a lot of scrutiny, a lot of uh, uh, checks and balances, and a lot of assurances that it uh, will never, never, never be used as a way of uh, getting uh, your revenge or getting any kind of uh, uh, be used as a launching pad against Israel.